Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charter and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. I'm out of town. I'm curled up in front of the fire with a good book. I haven't got a good book. Do you have a good book? Only the best. Can't wait till I learn how to read. Tonight I am not the illiterate's little friend. Good night. Simon, hmm? think. Mm, it's too late. Think of a desert moon. Think of a black sky sprinkled with silver stars. I'm trying. Another minute and I'll hear a coyote howling. Think of a small blonde with big eyes. You don't sound like a small blonde. I wouldn't know about the eyes. Her name was Marie and her mood was ardent. <laughs> you were hiding in the rumble seat. When you got back with the Hollywood, she slapped me in the face. <laughs> Raleigh. Raleigh. How are you, Simon? I'm keeping up with my social security payments and you? Oh, making a series of personal appearances all over the country in the shrinking flesh. Mm. The studio's idea. Simon, I know it's late, but I've got to see you right away. Well? The address is 39 Fitch Avenue. If you hurry over, I'll give you a shampoo. I already had a shampoo. Stop boasting and come on over. You sound worried. I'm going out of my mind, which might not be a long trip, but Simon, I'm besieged by a gorilla. <laughs> Hello, Raleigh. Simon, come on in. Thanks. It's good to see you. Oh, Marie still remembers you. Oh? I duck every time I meet her. Raleigh, I hate to get personal, but uh, someone has confused you with Grant. This tomb is, um... Renting this moth-eaten mansion was the studio's idea. Oh. I tried to have them put in a small subway, but they got very snide about it. <laughs> it's really a very nice mansion. Uh, when did Dracula move out? Keep this under your hat, but I think he's still around lurking. Let's start the long trek. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the idea is just, just set a steady pace and keep to it. Yeah, but how do you know you're going in the right direction? The moss on the moldings. Oh, yeah. Uh, see, Raleigh, what about this gorilla you mentioned over the phone? Oh, I'd forgotten about him for a few fleeting moments. Simon, the next picture I'm doing is a jungle picture. Oh. You mean whoa. Anyway, the studio got the bright idea of having me photographed next to one of our furry little brothers. So they issued a dozen memos, and a little man complete with gorillas showed up here about an hour ago with 9,000 photographers. Oh, uh, we veer to the left here. Oh, thank you. The photographers ran out of flash bulbs some time ago and left. The gent with the primate, his name is Preble. The primate? No, the gent. Oh. He seems to feel reluctant about leaving. Oh, is he bigger than you are? No. Well, then why the desperation call to me? Uh, I don't know exactly, except that well, Preble isn't some kind of a jam. He wouldn't tell me what it was, but... Shy? No. Terrified, I think. Ah, we've made it. The gorilla. <laughs> He's only a very small monkey. And this is Mr. Preble. Mr. Preble, Simon Templer. How, how do you do? How do you do? Uh, Simon Templer? Yes. The, the saint? In a haphazard sort of way. You're the kind of man who might be able to help me. They'd be afraid of you. Who would be? Oh, I, I don't know if I should tell you, but because maybe, maybe I'm guilty too. Guilty of what? Oh, I, I'd better go now. Perhaps after I think it over. May I call on you for aid if... Of course you may. Thank you very much. Uh, Wenceslaus, we're leaving now. Wenceslaus? Yes. He's a very talented monkey. I, I spent years training him. And now perhaps he's going to be the reason why I'll go to jail. Well, that is... Good night, Mr. Ames. You were very cooperative. Part of my job, but why don't you break down and tell Mr. Templer all? Thousands, may millions of people have. Oh, I, I'm sure of that, but I can't decide whether I can be helped. Please, I'll go now, if you don't mind. All right. Think you can find the front door all by yourself? I'm sure I can. I'm in the phone book, Mr. Preble. And I'd suggest you don't wait too long. No, I, I won't. He's a funny little man. He was practically running when he left. Nothing much you can do for him if he won't open up. Perhaps not, but... Raleigh, let's go after him. But, Simon... I've seen terror in people's eyes before, and I don't like it. That isn't pretty. Simon, have you got any idea about what's bothering him? Not much of one, but from what he said, I'd guess that somehow and probably innocently he'd gotten himself involved with something or somebody highly illegal. The monkey figures in it, too. He's made the front door. Mm. If my legs hold out and we catch up with him, I'd like to... Simon! Yeah, that was pre Come on, we run for it. 
That car. He turned the corner. Too far away to get the license number. Well, maybe... Maybe there's someone playing a joke on Preble, Simon. Uh, no. It wasn't a very good joke, Raleigh. Preble died, but not laughing. <laughs> I phoned the police. I'll be here pretty soon. Good. There's not much point in my remaining. It'd only irritate them. All right, but, uh, Simon, take the monkey with you. Huh? What? I'm not the type on which a monkey looks good. Besides, I think Preble would prefer to have you hold onto the monkey rather than the police. Well, maybe you're right. If the monkey was involved in anything and wasn't under police guard, things might happen. All right. I'll take him. I liked Preble. You could be sticking your neck out, asking for the axe, Simon. But you don't mind that, do you? Now, as a matter of fact, I like that, too. Monkeying with murder. Oh, shut up. What would the neighbors say? Hello. They'd say hello. Oh, well, that is... <laughs> I've been waiting for you. You have? Uh-huh. That's why I'm out of breath. Well, it would be fun believing that, but... Um... I meant I ran up the stairs to be here ahead of you. Oh, it was you in that cab that followed mine, huh? Shouldn't we discuss this inside? Oh, perhaps we should. Uh, the light switch is to your right. Got it. Oh, nice. Oh, thank you. Uh, my name is Simon Templer. I know. I'm Lola. And this is Wenceslaus. He's a monkey. I know that, too. Oh, you're very bright. But um, what's on your mind? I'm... <sighs> afraid to tell you. Well, I wonder if I'm afraid to hear. Look away for a minute and... Well, it can't be that embarrassing. Please. I'm shy. Well, all right. I I'm uh, looking away. Without having anyone see me take this out of my bag. Take what? Oh. Oh, that. This. Hmm. Lola, you've deceived me. Have I? I thought you were preparing to tell me how smitten you were by my curly locks. They're cute. Yeah, I didn't expect you to point a revolver at me. But you see, Wenceslas has even curlier locks. Mm, more, too. That's right. So I'll take him. And you can go to sleep. Yeah, but I'm not sleeping. Would you rather be dead? You can't shoot me. Why not? It's not in my lease. Why do you want the monkey? I'm very fond of Wenceslas. Oh, an old schoolmate? Or did he belong to someone you love? Simon, you're bitter. You're beautiful. Thank you. Liar. Why, Simon? And possibly a murderer. That's the nicest thing anybody has ever said to me. Good night, Simon. Don't look around, Lola, but uh, someone's just opened the door behind you. Oh, such an old trick, Simon. Mm, believe me, this isn't a trick. It isn't going to do me any good either from the looks of things. Hi, Lola. <laughs> it's your ever-loving Max. Drop the pup. I, I... Drop it. All right. Now, we're all one happy family. I'm not happy. What do you want? Huh? Huh? Well, you want to laugh and be merry. Well, do you have to do it in my living room? Friends, you are a very lucky guy. I count my blessings every night. Because now you only got half an explanation to make. I was young, foolish. The night was... For example, would I have walked in and found Lola there sitting in your lap? Then you would have had to explain that, too. Oh, don't be silly. The explanation would be obvious if... But That's seeing horrible. as how Lola was not being friendly, all that you got to explain, how come you got the monkey? Wenceslas? Oh, it's love, Max. He loves me for my eyes are blue. He hates me for my mouth. Ha, ha, ha. I must be giving quite a performance. Yeah, yeah. And so far, you're still alive, too. Not like Preble. Mm. Suppose we leave personalities out of this. How'd you get the monkey? He followed me home. I'm beginning to stop laughing. Oh, that's a shame. You have such a jolly laugh. I am beginning to get sore. Max, Keep no. out of this. For the time being, you are in the clear. You was removing a monkey from this guy here. What you were going to do once you had the monkey? I was going to bring him to you. Yeah, well, I will decide if I want to believe that in my leisure time. Right now, I'm waiting for Junior there to make with the lips. You mean you want Wenceslas to chat? I mean you. Oh, all right. Well, there was once a young lady of Siam who remarked, Oh, what a big girl I am. Cut it out. Oh, you heard that one. Well, how about oh, hey, the monkey? I was hoping you wouldn't notice. The little darling picked up Lola's gun. Hey, listen, pal, you wake me. I wake you. Well, on the other hand... Ah. <laughs> Thank you, Wenceslaus. Uh, you see, he's fond of my shoulder. Now I've got a gun, too. Well, how do you like that? It's a nice touch. Wenceslaus is very bright. Yeah. Now I got a gun pointing at you... But you got a gun pointing at me. That's beautifully put. 
And if we was to trade bullets, maybe one of us might get out alive. Ah, but which one? Right now, I ain't sure I want to find out. How about us uh, arbitrating? Of course. You drop your gun and get out of here, and I'll go to sleep. I don't have to drop my gun to get out of here. That's true enough. All right, let's observe that happy event. Get out. But I gotta have the monkey. Wenceslas doesn't like you. I still... <coughs> hey, who's playing with the light? <coughs> Lola! Sorry, what... Somebody left. Or perhaps a couple of somebodies. I don't know yet. Simon, don't put the lights on. Why? Uh, I'm afraid of what we'll see. The shooting's over. I've got to. <coughs> I was so frightened. Simon, nobody's been shot. Max is gone. Somebody has been shot, Lola. Well, oh, the monkey. Yeah. He's dead. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I sort of liked Wenceslas. Well, Wenceslas isn't interested anymore. I am, though. Am I liking you? Not at the moment. What I meant was Wenceslas wasn't killed by accident. He was off by himself when he was shot. He was murdered. That's strange. A monkey murdered. Very strange. What could he have known that meant he had to die? Simon. Yes, Lola? You made me promise to take you to Max, but it's not safe. The taxi? Going after Max. Oh, perhaps not. But I like Wenceslas. I even like Preble. Still, it's no real concern of yours. Preble was killed shortly after I'd met him. Wenceslaus was murdered in my apartment. Makes it all sort of personal. Besides, I don't admire killers. How about me? You killed anyone? No. Well, in that case, I could very easily... Why? Believe you. And if you did? Then I could very easily... Why? Yeah. <laughs> warm night, isn't it? No. Cold. Paper says Preble. Yeah. It's a warm night. You mind? No, uh, but uh, what will the cab driver think? What do you think he'll think? He'll think what I think he'll think. Well, we've arrived. It's not likely to go down in history as a deathless statement, but... Lola? All right. I'll pay the driver. Here's a little something for your income tax return. Oh, thanks, mister. Let's go. Max won't be here. No, we'll wait for him. You see, this isn't Max's house. Oh? Belongs to his boss. Well, it's nice to know Max isn't among the unemployed. Simon, we'd better be very careful. I always am. I meant... Well, remember what happened to the monkey. Nobody could confuse me with a monkey. I... I shaved. Good evening. Mr. Haig. Ah, Lola. May we come in? Of course. Come into the parlor, naturally. It's where the villain always leads the fair heroine and handsome hero... Uh, Lola, I require an introduction. Mr. Haig, this is Simon Templer. Simon, Mr. Haig. How do you do? Delighted. Um, the parlor. Make yourselves comfortable. I'm doing my best to sound like a spider. Uh, shall I try to look like a fly? It wouldn't work. Hmm, rather an odd combination. Lola and the saint. Both for the saint. Well, you mustn't take the name literally. And for Lola. Haig, I tried to get the monkey. And, uh, Roland Ames' autograph at the same time? No. Simon had him. I'm deeply fascinated. But you must know all about that. How? Well, Max must have told you. We'll bypass that for the moment. Max must have told you he killed a monkey. He told me nothing of the sort. Well, the monkey's dead. So, Max? Yeah, Mr. Hake? Max, I have just been informed that you assassinated Wenceslaus. Huh? Killed him. Who said so? That for the moment is irrelevant. Did you or did you not kill the monkey? Well, you think I'm nuts or something when that chimp's the only one who knows where to stone Shut me? up. Huh? You blithering idiot. I should send you back to driving a truck. In the name of the American truck driver, I resent that. I beg your pardon. The American truck driver is courteous, considerate, and always helpful to the motorist in time of trouble. Uh, would Max be? Don't pay no attention to him, Mr. Hank. I did not knock off that chimp. Lola? Of course he did. Simon and I were both there when he did the it. The room was dark at the time, Lola. But he... Max may have shot the monkey by mistake, or he may not have shot the monkey at all. Then who did? Well, there were only three people in the room. You, Max, and myself. But you wouldn't have shot the monkey, Simon, except by accident. Well, that's out. I didn't fire a gun at all. No, me neither. When the lights went out, I went away fast. Well, this is beginning to look like... Like a job on me. On the other hand, Lola, you did go after the monkey alone. 
You tried to get him from Mr. Templer alone. Is it possible you wanted the monkey dead because he'd already shown you a... Uh, Mr. Templer, you're not one of us. Well, I haven't been blackballed yet. You may consider yourself blackballed and leave. I don't think so. Uh, Max? No, Max. I still have the gun. The one I didn't fire back at my apartment, remember? Mr. Hank. Exactly what is your interest, Templer? The stones. What? The ones Max mentioned a few minutes ago. I might want to uh, play on your team. Mm, need you be so wholesome about it? There were three people involved. You, Lola, Max. Obviously, either Lola or Max have disqualified themselves. Now, I'll take his or her share. But, my dear fellow, if Lola has anticipated this, there'll be nothing to share. But if she hasn't? Mm -hmm. There's still no reason to include you. Because, you see, the monkey is dead. Preble also is dead. A remark of the utmost irrelevance. Not right? precisely. You see, Preble had to die because he was an honest man. Preble was an idiot. Max, uh, how did you know Preble was dead? I heard it on a radio. And you, Mr. Hay? The same source. What did the bulletin say? Mm, nothing beyond the fact that Preble was shot to death. I see. Let's go back a bit. You must have hired the monkey from Preble, but of course you'd have told him it was for a joke. Preble believed you at first, but when he stopped believing you, when he realized what you'd used the monkey for, you had to kill him. When he realized what, Mr. Templer? Max has mentioned stones in English jewels. Obviously, all three of you are thieves, jewel thieves, then. But obsessed with a monkey? Why? We're fond of monkeys. That's a pretty sentiment, but untrue. You must have used the monkey to get at jewels that were inaccessible to any human being. But something went wrong. Hey, Mr. Hay. Shut up. What went wrong, Mr. Templer? The monkey got the jewels, but he must have evaded you and disposed of them someplace. But where? <laughs> That's your problem, isn't it? What the monkey did with the jewels. But the monkey is dead now. He'll never show you. Mr. Haig, he's too smart. Perhaps. Uh, your suggestion, Lola, is... Uh... I think we ought to get rid of him. Oh, Lola, you've wounded me to the quick. Aren't you forgetting, my dear, that he has a gun which he's pointing at us? That's my gun. It's not loaded. You could be lying, Lola. I don't want to find out the hard way. All right, Simon. Shoot me. Oh, no thanks. I never shoot beautiful women. Uh, an interesting dilemma. Go ahead, Mr. Templer. Be a sport. Shoot, Lola. No, I have a better idea. Let's find the jewel. How? Well, we'll borrow a monkey from a pet shop. We'll put that monkey in the same circumstances Wenceslaus was in, and maybe he'll do the same thing. Mm -hmm. An idea, yes. I don't trust him. You don't? Then that perhaps is a very good reason for accepting his suggestion. Mr. Templer, uh, shall we go borrow a monkey? <laughs> But Wenceslaus was prettier. Mm, this one looks moth eaten. No, oh, I don't imagine that matters. Does it, Lola? I don't care. What do you think, Max? To me, a monkey's a monkey. Max the realist. Well, shall we try Lola's place first? A splendid idea. Mm -hmm. Might save us a good deal of time. Mr. Hake, don't you think. I think nothing. I know a few things. One, we used the monkey to break into a. <clears throat> to pick up a few jewels for us. He did so and then disappeared for a while. He could have been at your place, Lola, or at Max's. When we finally located the monkey, the jewels were gone. And perhaps our little substitute will find them, which will be very nice for the, uh, survivors. Well, he's been all over my apartment, made a mess of it, and... Found nothing. Nor did we. The temple, I'm afraid... Uh... That Lola's innocent? Uh, uh, then, uh, uh, suppose we try Max's happy little home next. Mm -hmm. Hey, that monkey just knocked over my last bottle of real lemon juice. Lemon juice? Are you fond of vitamins, Max? Nah. nah I keep it in memoriam of a girl I used to know who raised lemons. <laughs> Only on me, all she ever raised was lumps. Well, there's not a corner, nook, or cranny of this place that hasn't been investigated. Uh, Templar. I know, but we're not at the end of our search yet. So where do we go next? Mr. Haight mentioned your place and Max's, Lola. He forgot to mention his own house. Or did he forget? That, and I hope no one is bitterly disappointed, is that... No jewels in my home, either. Mm, you're quite right. No jewels. Well, that means none of us took them. 
It also means... That unless Wenceslaus turns into a ghost and returns to haunt us, we don't ever find no stone. At which unhappy point I suggest we call it a day. Uh, night, rather. May I ask for your absence, all of you? Hey, wait a minute there. I still want to know where them stones are. I put a lot of hard work in on that job. He's still, you idiot. He's right, Mr. Hake. Of course he's right. You're right. I'm right. It's the blasted monkey who's wrong. Oh, we mustn't speak ill of the dead. The blasted monkey is dead. So, by the way, is Preble. Incidentally, why was he killed? Merely because he suspected his monkey had been used illegally? Uh-uh. That doesn't convince. But that was what you yourself said. I was making conversation at the time. I needed an opportunity to check. Searching all three houses for the jewels. Now that's over. It checks. What are you getting at? The reason the monkey had to be killed. You are nuts. Max, you're actually showing signs of intelligence. Templar, we wanted that monkey alive. Sure, the monkey was the only one who knew where the jewels were. Ah, but you see, that proves whoever killed Preble and the monkey had already found the jewels. Keep talking. Preble was killed, but his killer made no attempt to grab the monkey. Strange? No. Because it proves the killer had no use for the monkey. He already had the jewels. Or she. That is, and pardon me for pointing, one of you already has the jewels and is trying to keep them all. I wouldn't like anybody trying that. Why are you looking at me, Simon? Be still, both of you. Mr. Templer, you interest me. Not at all, strangely. Pray continue. I'd rather continue with this gun in my hand. Now then, Lola, how did you find your way to my apartment earlier this evening? I'd, I'd been following Preble. He was shot. I saw you leave with the monkey, so I followed you. And you, Max? I was following her. Can either of you alibi the other? I didn't even know he was following me. Hey, hey, now that you bring it up, she ditched me for a while. Well, let's skip to my apartment. Who shot the monkey? Lola? That I like. I don't, because she had no gun. I had her gun, remember? But I didn't find those shots, honest. Huh? Max, I'm beginning to wonder about you. Hey, I got my don't gun lift now. It. You got Lola's, it ain't loaded. Don't bet on it. Lola is quite a liar, Max. <laughs> oh. It's just a flesh wound, Max. I've been practicing. I'll take your gun. Uh, well, two-gun Templar. On your way out, Templar, take the big oaf with you and throw him to the police, will you? I'd prefer they didn't have to come here to pick him up, considering my, uh, uh profession. Yes, not to mention considering your, uh, uh, guilt. I beg your pardon? Mr. Haig, how did you know Preble and his monkey had gone to visit a movie star, specifically Roland Dane? Well, I didn't, uh, I mean... Uh, uh, you mean you did. Remember you asked Lola if she had gotten Roland Dane's autograph? How did you know that the monkey was at the Ames place? Well, I, uh, I heard it over the radio. But according to your own statement, all the radio bulletin said was that Preble had been shot to death. Hmm. No reply, huh? You knew because you wanted to silence Preble, and you did. You didn't bother about the monkey because you already had the jewels. But when you saw me leave with Wenceslas, you began to worry. In police hands, the monkey would have been safe for you... But in mine, with Lola and Max both after me, that monkey represented danger to you. So you came after us, shot the monkey, and... Mr. Haik, I hate to point, uh, but you have a date with a death cell. And that, Raleigh, is the story of how I foiled Mr. Haik, jewel thief and murderer. I'm insulted. I was never even a suspect. <laughs> Simon, uh, what happened to Max? Mm, jail, too. An old burglary charge took a new lease on life when the police saw him. Sad. And the girl? Lola? Uh, Raleigh, you know something? What? Lola is also a small blonde with big eyes, like uh, Marie. But Simon, she's a crook. Oh, not really. Her heart's in the right place. Left side. I mean, she was just young and foolish. We've all made our mistakes, right? Uh, especially with small blondes. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, he's here. Simon for you. Oh, thanks. Hello, Lola? Why, yes, of course. Ten minutes? Right. Goodbye. Simon, you're going out with her? I am. Is she the type of girl who would be persona grata at the YWCA? Oh, I won't take her to the YWCA. Is she the type of girl your mother would have loved? My mother isn't taking her out, Raleigh. I am. Hmm. Simon, you're treading on a very dangerous path. I refer to the one surrounded by primroses. Like Marie, huh? Yes. I, uh... Oh, that oh, is... Oh, don't a... say another word. 
I'll call her back and ask if she's got a friend for you. Hmm? You've been listening to another transcribed adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now here's our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, as responsible parents, you never think of allowing your children to play with poison. And as responsible Americans, it's your duty to protect them from the dangers of the poison we call prejudice. Here in America, racial and religious hatred does exist. Sustained by the political adventurers and plain crackpots who are willing to scrap the democratic way of life to attain their own ends. Prejudice in America is centered in their adult philosophy. But unless we guard ourselves and our families, it can find its way into our own lives. Then the poison would do its work, undermining America's unity, sabotaging our prestige abroad, and wrecking our ideal of individual freedom. In your family life, you can effectively carry on a campaign against prejudice. Our youngsters grow up with a pride in their country. Teach them that part of that pride is our tradition of accepting or rejecting people on their individual worth not on the basis of race or religion or color. Remember, freedom and prejudice can't exist side by side. If you choose freedom, fight prejudice. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of The Saint. Good night. This adventure of The Saint was written by Louis Vitties. In our cast, you heard Maggie Morley as Lola and George Neitz as Roland Ames. Max was played by Sheldon Leonard and Hate by Theodore Von Ellis. Jack Moyles with Preble, Jerry Hausner, The Monkey. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, is a James L. Safier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring in RKO's production of His Kind of Woman. All you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. Your announcer, Don Stanley. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Tonight, Tallulah is your MC once again on NBC's hour and a half Sunday extravaganza, The Big Show. Tonight's stars will be Jimmy Durante, Clifton Webb, Charles Boyer, Eddie Arnold, Meredith Wilson, and a host of others. Another Sunday evening favorite, Theater Guild on the Air, presents the dramatic story, Lottie Dundas, starring Dorothy McGuire and Jessica Tandy. So remember, enjoy.